scout this morning. Bushel Billy, he is down along with our CPS nutrient, whatever you want to call it, salesman. Just going to walk through a couple cornfields and get depressed. Nothing like starting your day off right. That is channel. Say, Dex, you ready to look at some corn? What do you got there? My mom's truck. Your monster truck. BJ, what's your expert opinion on this corn here? Ain't good. I mean, you think this is, I mean, this here, here, it's probably about a 300 bushel year. Maybe the neighbor's farm. Yeah, I'm six foot four, and that, that ear of corn is about a foot over my head. Well, I'm six foot four, can you see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Still God. some tip back though in them, isn't there? That's a... Still 36 even with a tip back. Well, at least we got some good corn. Look at that. I can't hardly reach it. What is it? Well, it's shot, a, it's shot a, a second ear, so that might be some of it. I don't know. I guess a lot of them did, didn't they? Tried to. Trying to. Billy, when they try to shoot two ears, that's not a good thing, right? Didn't that just take it's it? It's a good thing. I thought it just took energy away from the big pot. No, it'll it'll always preserve the energy for the primary ear. Anything extra, it'll put it in the secondary. Okay. But, yeah, it's not a bad sign. It means it's healthy and well-fed. Okay. Got his tall for those boy hit Did you put uh did you put fungicide down here, Dad? Yeah. Okay. This end might not have any on the ends. Mm-hmm. Without it, yeah. But it's clean. It's clean and happy. Yeah. yeah it it looks looks like good. It. Unfortunately, folks, we're in the shade too, so <laughs> it's hard to tell what it looks like in the middle. And I ain't no, it's, it's good out here. It's good out here. It's gonna be heavy. Get that stuff, I think. Sprayer blight. Yeah, sprayer blight. Dax, you back there, bub? I got him. This is from the sprayer when we put on the fungicide, so got a nice little walkway. Boy, they'll love a little bit of sunlight, don't they? Yep, this is what happens when you don't shade out your canopy, folks. Yep, there goes all the money we save putting on our fungicide by ourselves. Not really. Up out here now, yeah. 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 Well, at least for one spot of the field, we're going to have a high number. <laughs> at this stage of the game, I mean, this corn, like the only thing that's going to affect now is test weight, right? Well, in dry down, remember your yield calculation that denominator, that bottom number, we always use 90,000 kernels per bushel as a as a conservative estimate the amount of moisture we get now between maturity can move that from 90,000 to 110 or down to 60. okay right? so we can still see a pretty significant yield jump or decrease based on late season rains. yeah in. so half your biomass is determined at this growth stage and it's so, the paint's not getting any bigger it's all in the cob, cob and how how thick that cob gets how deep the kernels get so that's going to I mean, so is that test weight or is that just size of the boat. size of the kernels uh, which leads into test weight so if it stays dry we're gonna have some pretty lightweight corn yeah this is dry and slow the dents nice and smooth the grain quality is dark or the grain color is dark so it looks like now it's gonna be pretty good test weight but it's the difference between one that big around and one that big around like this, this ear here, I mean, we got tip back at the top. What causes these aborted kernels here? So, the top here, these were never fertilized. Okay. So that's a pollination issue. The, the silks came out late because it starts silking from the base to the top. So these, this is just from hot or yep. heat. This silked late and the pollen was gone. Okay. Now these that have the yellow spots in the middle, those were kernels that were fertilized, but under drought stress, the uh, the plant just aborted them. They're not going to fill them in grain. So the plant is actively moving nutrients from these kernels and using them to fill out these on the bottom. It's cannibalizing these here that, for the benefit of these on the bottom. So we're going to get better quality kernels here and just not have anything here. Yeah, you're, the bad news is this is 30 bushels that you're missing because there wasn't enough water to fill it out. 
Yep. US, USDA crop tour would say this is 250 bushel corn though. Yeah. <laughs> it still has a chance. Yeah. Yeah, last time Billy was down here was right after the great flood. And we kept finding some creatures that were tearing up our corn. Um, they were just burrowing into the ground. Well, now they're just knocking over rows of corn that are about, I don't know, eight feet apart. No, nah, it's a sprayer, obviously. But. Big green ox. Yeah, big green ox bow. <laughs> yeah. Must wait, are you there in this dog? All right, we are in our strip till, no till plot. And yeah, it looks a little bit better over here. Yeah. When we first There's popped into it, the no till ground looked terrible. But it looks a lot better right here, I guess. This is the first time I've been in here for a couple months. Not near as clean, Dad. This would have been around 34,000, I think. This is a strip tilled part of the field. Or no, this is no till right here. To our left was no till? Uh, we are in the no till, that way is strip till. Oh, this is, both of these are no till? Yes. And then over 12 is strip till? Uh, I made 240 feet, so it's uh, a few passes. Okay. So how's our stock health look there? Nice. This is pure stri stri or no till here. So what I want to do is compare the stock diameter and the rind thickness with what we see in the strip till then. Okay. It's hard to tell when the ear leaf's wrapped around it, but that that's the shank that holds the ear on. And then as it matures and dies, that'll lean over and tip it over. But this has to stay intact for the ear to stay on the plant and us come combine it. So sometimes when you were combining, I'll notice, especially the end snouts, you'll see an ear just fall off. Is that just poor ear shank? Yeah, it'll start it'll start to deteriorate here next to the node. Uh -huh. And then if you have ear drop, that's when that, that separates and falls off. So some corn plants, this is only, this is only about half inch long and that ear stays up real tight to the stalk. Others, this is about a medium size, some get six, seven inches long and that ear lays way out in the row and uh, hangs over. So it's just characteristics of the genetics. This variety definitely has some disease in it and this was applied with, did you put headline on this? Headline. So it does have fungicide on it. Here Dax, you can take that one home with you. Ooh. Peter did this one. Yeah. He gave him a nice big cut in the web of his hand yesterday playing with a, with some corn. Just a little bit of difference in stock diameter. So what's got the bigger diameter? The strip tail. Okay. It seems to be a little darker. Right here, but it's a little healthier, but it could it, be soil it, types it, too. Yeah, it's inconsistent. We're right at the edge of gravel. We'll be just going to see Yeah, I wish we would have used our uh one of our apps to mark a spot to check a few different times throughout the year. It's hard to tell where you are right now. Combine mm -hmm. tells. Yeah, it will. It's like that's a way to haul. It is a little hard. It's always a challenge for plants to take in P and K in dry weather. And so I was curious with the drought stress down here if these plants had an advantage or not. With it being banded in the row. God, this wasn't banded in the row. This just was 28. Yeah, just nitrogen. Oh, just nitrogen. Yeah, okay. Hopefully this coming here. If we're still in Whoa, Billy keeps tearing all these plants down. We're going to yeah, go broke. Take our profit right there. Tight margins. That's where we're take at. it out of his fertilizer okay, price. Okay, we'll do that. Well, if you, you said you banded nit nitrogen with the strip till here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 20 gallons. Well, I see. This one. Well, you can certainly see a difference in the lower canopy. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, my guess is if you come back with P and K with the same applicator where the plants don't have to go searching for it and when the soil gets dried out you'll see the difference there too but as far as the lower canopy being intact and green further down I'd say it's working so far compared to I mean it's hard to tell when you're buried in the corn whether it's soil type or not but I think um, I think it's made a difference
Well, like Dad said, we'll know in about a month and a half for sure. So are we variable rate nitrogen on this? No, no. With 20 gallon strip tail. Okay. And, and 30 gallon or 35 gallon dribbled. Tail. And then the gotcha. no-till had all that at one shot, didn't it? Uh, yes. The yeah, no-till. Yes, on the no all of it on the no-till was at one shot, late. Late. So this had 20 gallon early. Okay. okay. Coming up, but then the season. This so that was. Might have made a difference. Well, yeah, it definitely made a difference. But that was applied like first week of June, whereas this had nitrogen all the time. Yeah. Compared to that up on the hill, uh -huh. this has got quite the, twice the stock under it. Yeah. And it's it's going to stand and and look real yeah. real yeah. real nice at harvest. I think that um, that last field we look at, the tops are probably going to come out. Yeah. But this is going to this will look real good at harvest, and I think your nitrogen application is going to show up when the yield monitor runs too. If I had to guess, yeah. this is 1077 pine area. And uh, when I'm trying to get a gauge on on harvest yield, if those ears are all on the same node and consistent height, height. and at a reasonable uh, height, uh -huh. that's a pretty good sign of consistency on emergence and early season uh -huh. vigor, and all that rolls into yield at the end. This was playing with the fence. Jeez, let's go. See where the birds. Yep. Come in here and peeled it back. Yep. yep. Starts the infection. Yep. So what's this here? I think it's good. Cigarella. Get them big powder puffs on them, you know. I've seen some from other fields. Yeah, thanks for coming out and checking it. Matt, quit walking away. I'm trying to get you in the frame. <laughs> That's why he's backing into the tree. See me back. Everybody, I did want to thank Bushel Billy for coming out and walking some fields with us. If you guys are on Instagram, you ought to check his page out. Billy does a great job um, presenting agronomy in an entertaining way. So even as a farmer, agronomy gets pretty boring sometimes, and he keeps it keeps it entertaining. So check him out if you're on Instagram. Thanks for watching. If you need some hats, check out the link in the description, and we'll see you in the next video. Also, don't forget to thumbs up the video.